Let's start again. <laughs> no, no, you can't. Don't start. <laughs> it's a cordless 15 mil. I can call this on him. Polisher. It's cordless. Yeah, <laughs> I don't want. I'm going <laughs> to. You know, do you know the number now? Do you memorize memorize it? What's on there in it? XFE. Go on. I say in it. Go on. Is it? I'm on. So today we're. I'm on. <laughs> Is it? I'm not going to write. XFE 15125 18-18.0-EC. Okay, you'll see what I say. <laughs> it's a polisher. But anyway, go on. <laughs> oh Christ. Hi guys, so welcome back. In this video today, we're gonna to be taking a look at polishing some of the imperfections we found in the last video during the inspection. So on this panel here, on this door, you can see a lot of wash marring and some swirls. There's also a little bit of sinkage as well in the lacquer, which again, Kelly explained in the last video. So today for this, I'm gonna be going ahead with the Flex PX15, is it? Is that the Let's start again. <laughs> no, no, you can't. Don't start. <laughs> it's a cordless 15 mil. I can call this on him. Polisher. So today we're going to be going ahead with a cordless flex machine. And after a little bit of discussion last night, we actually spent some time going through the differences between foam pads and microfibers. And I mentioned to Kelly that I've always chosen foam over all the years. Just I thought microfiber was too harsh, um, but Kelly. Gave me a lot of benefits and a lot of reasons why to oh. use microfiber. Your car isn't as soft <laughs> as we imagined a Japanese paint there would be. Is that, yeah. But yeah, I did explain to you <sighs> microfiber can be a, twice as aggressive as, say, a foam pad. Yeah. But if you change your technique and method, and do you remember we said about the speed? Mm -hmm. You notice when I'm polishing with a microfiber pad. Yeah. Depending on what machine we're using, I've got the speed probably at about a third of the way up the full yeah. range. Yeah. So if you've got zero to six, I'm, I'm at about speed two, which yeah. I think surprised you. Yeah, I'm used on nearly every machine. I'm up to a speed four. Uh, so if you, simple for the viewers, if you've got a pad combination, pad and compound combination, and all of its size, because they're 15, mm -hmm. yep. the UDOS there has been fit, sit, set into 15, that is a 15 mil orbital polisher, if you wanted to turn the speed right up, that would be a very aggressive cut. Yes. But we sort of spoke earlier with Emerson Food, you might have a 400 horsepower car or a 500 horsepower car. Do you use 500 horsepower every day in every single... Exactly. You don't. Yeah. So if you dial the speed down, we can... And I actually didn't need to dial it down as much as I thought. I wanted mm -hmm. to prove to you on soft Japanese paint here in this building, we would still use microfiber. Yeah. And um, if the viewers don't know, you notice straight away how little dusting. Oh God, yeah, no dusting, no sling, it's so clean and tidy. Because isn't it? the fear is obvious, isn't it? If I grab a microfiber cloth and then you had dusting from a foam pad, what do you do to take the dust off? You use a microfiber exactly. pad and it takes it. It's carried away. So microfiber, in my opinion, is, is if people get past the scariness of what you had of yeah. how aggressive it could be, the actual way they polish, it's a different sort of process slightly, mm -hmm. there's a different results, but they're positive results, I think, that you've got a clean surface afterwards. Yeah, yeah so we adjusted the, and we didn't get as much micro marring as I possibly wanted to show you, but we did prove yesterday that the one step orange pad yep. gave a much better gloss from a one step and now this process, I'd recommend two steps. Yes. So we're gonna go heavy cut and refining. So what we're gonna do now then is we're going to go through this process that we just mentioned with this pad and polish combination. We're gonna do a small section on the door here and try and show 50-50, and then we're gonna to jump to some footage that we recorded last night, playing on the bonnet, where we actually discuss a little bit more yeah. about the foam and microfiber. So yeah, let's jump in and crack on with this. Only because it's a vertical panel, I'm priming like that. Yeah, I like your idea of doing yeah, the dots on, uh, on flat panels. Actually, it doesn't matter what we want to do. But we do it on the side as well, the dots, but that'd be fine. I'm not used to doing it on the side. <laughs> <laughs> but we are. There we go. Yeah, so if two squares and make them exactly the same, one with foam, one with microfiber, and put the same amount of compound, same speed, same pressure, 
and you went for the same amount of time, then you would have taken a lot more clear coat off on the microfiber compared to a one-step foam. Yeah. But if you was to what you done there, quicker with a microfiber, because only how long you're abrading the surface or how much removes, mm -hmm. if you keep doing it, it's going to keep on going. Yes. That's so it's almost a recalibration of how quick the set would be when using a, a larger throw orbit machine and a, and a microfiber pad. Let's have a look, shall we? Obviously, I can't see at this angle because you've got the, the bulb that way. There you so, go, you've yeah. overgunned it. Yeah. So I can see there's a haze in it. I mean, it's not terrible. And at the moment, there's a white mark, smear mark, which we can remove in a minute. Um, not terrible. I'll take that as a compliment from Kelly. <laughs> <laughs> no, well, I mean, it's, it's not yeah. super aggressive. Yeah. You've, you had the I'm spin low. I'm probably steadier than yeah. you guys yeah. are. So um, what we'll do, should we, should we unmask it? Yeah, and then probably. let's unmask it. And then what I'll do <clears throat> is we will alcohol wipe it first, mm -hmm. and then we'll panel wipe it, because then that's really definitely got rid of all the potential sort of fillers and oils and makeup that, that could be in compounds. And one compound to another may or may have less, more or less in there. So I'm just gonna do that to make sure I get rid of smears as well. Now, now it's very interesting because that has become really obvious now. You can tell now, now yeah. you've got that 50-50 line, yeah. you really can tell. Yeah. Can. So that's what people would get very scared of <laughs> Yes. And you sort of did that when we did the bonnet last night. I yeah. mean, <laughs> you must have had faith in me because I think it was nine o'clock we finished last night. I just carried on doing yeah. the rest of the car. <laughs> um, so that is not a great one step. So the, at the moment in time, <laughs> the whole passenger side looks like this. Yes. <laughs> yeah. The roof, the yeah. bonnet, the bumper, the back bumper. We've got the, yeah. So this side of the car is still to do. So we've got this dullness, this madness. But what it's done very quickly is removed. Yeah this light defects here. Now, so we can hopefully explain to the audience, I can see, and you did it on the bonnet last mm -hmm. night, those very faint wash marring marks would go over one step foam pads. Yes. But we know there's localized, you did one earlier up there on that wheel, yeah. there's localized deeper marks. So we had this discussion where, would you keep switching pads, maybe sizes of machines and pads yeah. and, and keep swapping pads and compounds, or would you just stick with one? And instead, in this case, you did there. You had the speed down low with a small amount of compound. Yeah. When you get to an area like I can see a little bit of dirt there, if there's a deeper defect, now I've shown you, stay in that area for longer. Yeah. Maybe a little bit more pressure and speed. Exactly, and because you're not ramping it up to four, you're at two. You've got that. Extra You've got adjustability. To go up, You've so. got that's exactly You've got adjustability, yeah. but this could scare people if it's gone and done that hazy. <laughs> yes. I know, and you haven't seen yet. We're going to refine that down with a finishing foam pad yeah. and a finishing compound, and we'll be able to remove that and make it really shiny. Definitely. So, in my approach, was actually stick with something probably slightly more aggressive. And mm -hmm. I suppose this comes back to old forums and detailing world. Everyone taught you to start with the least aggressive pad and compound. Find out the right. Spend. An hour or two first, finding out the right pad, the right polish, work your way up to get the correction, and then work your way back down to refine it. So, so if you, yeah, you spent a lot of time experimenting to start with. <laughs> and I've had lots of people say to me, they've gone to a car and spent hours test patching all around the yes. car. The problem you have, especially if it's an older car, their test patch a panel that may be original or could actually be aftermarket paint, find, found a sweet spot on that panel Yep. Then go to the next panel and it's different again. Speaking of which, we've got a video on a Triumph Stag exactly like that. Yeah, yeah, the bonnet was totally different to the wings right. and I was chased. It got to a stage where I knew the owner is a neighbour and it's like, he'll be acceptable of that. <laughs> it wasn't perfect, but they were two totally different. Yeah. It's a seven, 1974 car, so it's definitely going to have some repaint. I, I, yes. look at it, <laughs> I think I look at it, if you've got, and this is just an, a sort of a, an allergy or an, an analogy or possibly prediction through and a little bit of experience of teaching, if you always select the least aggressive pad, orbit size machine mm -hmm. and a compound, you're pushing it to its limit to try and to achieve results. Yes. It's like we said about racing a car that's got very little power. Yeah. Once you've got a heavier hitting, so the higher orbit machines and in microfiber or micro wall or wall pads, mm -hmm. which everyone's were scared of, as I said, come off the throttle. Yeah. Just, just be gentle and then you've got the ability. So probably interesting, I bet you would have had more success doing the opposite of what you imagine, picking mm -hmm. more of a heavy hitter yeah. 
and not sticking to you must be at number six speed or five speed. Because as I say, do we go at 75% throttle every time we go down the road? Yeah, exactly. We don't. And I guess to make it simple for people that are new to detailing, they want hard numbers and facts, don't yes. they? Yes, yeah. And that's what you've been trying to provide as well, is <laughs> it? And we've all got our own way of feedback here and what we're trying to achieve. But so what we're going to do, we need to carry on polishing the rest of yep. this side of this car, making it dull and hazy, and then we can show the audience yep. how to turn it back shiny again. Yep, so we're going to crack on with the rest of this then, uh, show you some other bits and bobs, and we'll come back to you in a couple of minutes. So we've been using the magfiber pad then on the paintwork and Kelly tells me he's got a few more tips and tricks for that pad. So yeah, can you just show us what other things it can be used for? So this glass looks clean yep. currently. If I just put, it's alcohol by the way, 50% mm -hmm. deionized water and alcohol. Hopefully you can see there's some sort of print, like a, a patchy yes. leopard spot print. It's actually the acid rain. I'm gonna move the trolley out of the way and I'm gonna put, I'll put a light on it. We might be able to see it easier if we move across. You see there's a sort of strange pattern and there's a print there. Yeah. Now we, we could use a dedicated glass cleaner, abrasive or even a liquid. Now I could use a strong panel wipe or alcohol and I could keep rubbing and rubbing and rubbing and rubbing. It's still gonna have that print, but I hope you notice the print's only there when it's starting to dry out. Yes, when yeah. it's completely wet, it looks fine. If we fully dry that glass, completely dry, You'll notice once it's dry, it looks like there's no contamination yeah. on there. It's only when it's damp, there's contamination. With this conversation, I think you said about coming down. I was here. just about to say, yeah, on the way down on Sunday, better mist, I don't know where, Milton Keynes, <laughs> it was raining. And yeah, just as the wiper, so it was when it's evaporating yeah. from the, yeah. So when the wiper sweep it away, you could really see. So one of my the hacks day. with the microfiber pad, so, and now I don't mind if it wants to, some, some might say, does it have to hold when there's a HDO version or the normal one? That doesn't matter. Yeah. More importantly here, I would normally use our slightly worn microfiber pads that we've used for the polishing of paint when the yeah. fibers are getting shorter. So instead of saying That's, that one isn't, it's quite long, but say we got to the stage where, oh, we need to discard this microfiber pad, in actual fact, we can use it to clean glass. Yeah, keep, keep a hold of that for later on. It's got a, a use. Definitely. So I wouldn't normally do a 50-50 on glass, obviously, <laughs> at all. What I would do is a tip, we won't do it here. If you've got trims that are this soft black matte paint, or matte rubber, sorry, mm -hmm. I would mask up these rubbers. But yeah. I'm going to do a small little patch up against this edge, and we'll do a 50-50 to show you what it cleans like. Yep. Now, I call it glass polishing, but it isn't glass polishing. I'm happy to use a polisher, polishing compound, and a polishing pad. But I'm only cleaning the contamination yeah. away. I'm not actually removing scratches and swirls. So I'd always go with a heavy cut, which actually I'm gonna have to get a compound. There's not a compound, let me grab a compound. You can't hurt the glass. Yeah. You're not gonna damage the glass. So I'm going with a orbital polisher, 15 mil 
Orbit, one of our HDO pads, microfiber pads, and hopefully, that's it, it's gonna come out, I'm gonna prime the pad up a bit, just so it's evenly spread. You don't, you don't have to worry about diminishing compounds and <laughs> patting it out, it's just literally an abrasion that's gonna take the contamination off. So I'll turn the speed down. What I'll do, I will wipe that compound off dry, and then we'll use the alcohol to, to demonstrate that it's clean that surface. Yeah. So as long as most of that's gone. So as I say again, I would mask up the rubbers when I actually do right around all the edges. Mm -hmm. So if we unmask that, take, I'm gonna give it a good soak so I can clean. I'll wipe that area to get rid of that line. I mean, I think hopefully you're going to see, we're going to flip the cloth this to a new area. And we'll do that again where it's soaking wet. And as I dry it and as the alcohol flashes away, what you'll start to see. Straight is, away, you can just see the jet black that's it. tin and not yeah. this film over the yeah. top of it, basically. There's so. a nice, the staining etching's gone. Yeah. So is my battery. <laughs> Let me go and get another flight. <laughs> so as you can see, there's a nice, completely clear yeah. window, almost a window in a window. <laughs> there's a patch which Definitely. we can see out of. So that's a real big tip of mine. Literally, it doesn't matter. Even the window's brand new and I've actually had new windscreens in my old cars. And when I've then done that trick with the alcohol and wiped it, there's patches, stains, and I think it's a brand new windscreen. Yeah. I always machine polish, but I'm mach it doesn't literally remove scratches. I'm using a machine polisher, microfiber pad. We talked about why I, the microfiber pad seems to work very well on the paint. Mm -hmm. When we said about it grabs the compound, yeah. so it's not flinging it everywhere. So if you essentially think about it, the other way, if you was to put compound on that cloth and push hard for yeah. a long time, you'd do the same cleaning effect. Why wouldn't you try and do as much of the window as possible yeah. with a machine and microfiber pad, yep. and then switch to the corners yeah. with your fingertip yep. or a smaller machine. But every single car, I've been detailed, it's probably I started doing that 10 years ago. Every single package or every single car we detail, we always do the windows. That's and nice. that's all of glass. Now there is one example actually, be careful here. We've got a 911 behind us, a Porsche 911, and they were, I believe, the, by far the first brand to ever do this. Mm -hmm. When you wash the car, if the windows are beading, so it's really repellent, yep. some manufacturers now, either as an option or standard, I put in from a factory a coating as part of the glass. Okay. So don't abrade that off. Yes. Because you're removing a factory in, in, sort of installed, but it's actually permanent, it yes. doesn't wear down at all. So normally 911s, Porsche 911s, there's a few other brands that you, they, only, they never do the windscreens, they never do the back, it's always just the side windows. Oh, okay. And we think they don't do the windscreens from what I've been told a long time ago is it will wear down because yes. of abrasion. And then customers will take it back to Porsche saying, what's wrong with my windscreen, it's not working anymore. So they only do the side windows right, normally. Okay. <laughs> but yeah, that's one thing. Don't just go straight in and polish it on a, so you might get a customer's car because you might actually be taking off a coat here. Yeah. But this wasn't beating, you know it's your car. Definitely. And that's clean. So what have we got to do now? Let's polish, polish clean, the <laughs> polish the windows with um, some, some compound and yep. pads, microfiber pads. So we might as well get to it. We'll get all this glass cleaned. And the reason why I'm doing that now is it can be quite messy. Yep. We've got to do a lot of masking, so it's, like, it's quite a long process. Uh -huh. So if this was piano black, and these were painted trims, I wouldn't be so concerned about masking them, because yes. all of this is all painted. It's, it's essentially, we're using the same pad that as what we did for, for the paint. Yeah. So actually, there's more masking to do here. We want to get all these windows clean. And the reason why I like to do that now 
is we're going to alcohol wipe them down afterwards, mm -hmm. then geotechnic panel wipe them, and we want that to evaporate for a few hours. Yep. So it's void of any moisture to then put a nano coating of water repellent on the windows, yep. and then we can crack on with the paint. Boom. So let's get doing the let's windows. Right then guys, so we've done with the rough cut down this side of the car then and as you can see just from one panel from the driver's door I've clogged this pad already so you are going to find this with pads that they are going to need cleaning and it depends how many pads you use per car you can either leave them till the end of the session or clean as you go and down here fortunately enough we've got a system 4000 a pad cleaner so Kelly's going to show me how this works and clean some pads so remember we've discussed earlier that a foam pad is shedding compound yes so it's almost slightly self-cleaning because the foam doesn't attract the compound yep. whatever compound using a microfiber pad is going to collect so these clog much faster than a foam pad would but these are much harder to clean because if we try to brush this now, yeah. it'll stay there. So traditionally, you would either put these in a washing machine or under mm -hmm. a sink, brush them with a load of dish, sort of fairy liquid or detergent, and spend a long time cleaning them, or a blowgun, yes. literally airline. Whereas a foam pad, you know, and you said you, we've, you can just brush them. Yeah. Some people, we talked about something that some body shop does, <laughs> which you won't say, but you can even use you know, a little hack of a microfiber cloth Yep. wrinkled up before, run the machine on a foam pad and rub it. A little bit of abrasiveness. And just None of this works soft. with a microfiber pad. Yeah. So ideally, we need some sort of cleaning system, which we have here. Yep. Now, I'm gonna do, I'm gonna clean my one and you can clean your one. Mm -hmm. And then we've got different machines here, sort of, but the same pad. And what I'll try and do is we'll take, deconstruct this bucket, this yep. pad washer, and I'll show you how it's collecting the dirty water once we've done some yep. cleaning. So I'm gonna do about, four or five pumps sort of pump there. I will do a clean, check it. If it needs more, I'll repeat the process. So you've got to prime this top. Yep. If you notice that there's no water yet. There you go, there's some water there now. So it's one, two, three, we'll do four. So if I stop early, what I'm doing, I'm not pushing hard down. Yep. I'm just letting the pads skip across this sort of nipple areas, these sort of dimples. Mm -hmm. So I'm not putting all the weight. That's, that's scraping the surface. So yep. if I turn that over now, you can see it's fluffed up, but it's still now pink in the compound, but it's gone fluffy. Yep. And it's very, very wet at the moment. So you could now turn the speed up high, lift the the backing plate so it's spinning fast, mm -hmm. but I need to clean that more. So I'm gonna do sort of another four pumps. Before I turn it over, you see what I've done there, rubbed it over the surface, yep. ramped the speed up gradually, lifted the, the backing plate so it's not quite touching. Now, one of my good detailing friends that's got one of these, who's loved it, then messaged me saying, I get soaking wet. <laughs> and I had to explain to him a washing machine. And that sounds crazy. When you've got your clothes in a washing machine, I said to him, it doesn't go to 1200 spin instantly. Yeah. It ramps up to shed some of the water, which is, what I've done now. So this is now not soaking wet. Yeah. Feel that? That's bone dry. <laughs> yeah. So, but if you try and pump 
and flood it and then turn the speed up flat and then just lift it off this lip. Yeah, it's just gonna flake. You're gonna get yeah, wet. Yeah. So it's literally people moaning that they get wet. And I'm like, when I've used this every single time, this is the result. And I'm like, <laughs> where's the water? There's nothing on me. Yeah. So no pressure there. now. Well, 50-50 they are. Yeah. Before and after. Yeah. It's worked, it's <laughs> done its job. Definitely. So you'll go. So let's have a go. So I'm just gonna move my camera. Winner. You ready? Yeah. yeah. Not pumping out? Yeah. yeah. I bet that's just made it fluffy, fluffy. which it has, and you yep. feel it's wet now. So, yep. I mean, technically, you could now hop, turn up high speed and it would dry. Yeah. But I, f I prefer it to be well completely clean. Yeah. For, yeah. I think Do it wider. This yesterday it took about 45 seconds. So. So, maybe one more go on that. Check your battery. Let's push the um, button there. Yes. You did you not notice you went to number four yeah. and then you turned it up to six, it didn't change. No, no, I thought. <laughs> Let me change the battery. <laughs> go on. So you're not getting the full speed out of the, the machine now. There you go. Boom. Don't dry. It's impressive. <laughs> it really is. Spot on that. So there's going to be more about this. Um, we're going to be doing another video later on for next week, doing pad talk. Um, so we're going to talk about all the various pads that Lake Country offer. And we're also going to be talking about this a bit more in detail as well. So before we do go on to the next stage, I think we Kelly's going to try and shot, show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. so it's, there's clean water in the bottom. Like I said, we'll talk about this next week. There's clean water in the bottom and all the dirty rinse water is collected in here. And we're just going to try and grab that now. versions or even other brands' ideas and concepts of this was the dirty water got completely contaminated with the, yes. the clean water straight away. So, you so just... yeah, <laughs> well, I've used it once. You're now putting dirty water back on. Yep. So what's happening is you've got the clean water in the bottom. And if I pull both these lips together, mm -hmm. keep that together, what we've got is the clean water in there. And in here now is captivated the dirty water. Yep. So basically all that fluid as you use it is going to transfer to there. Once that's full, you take this away. So if I tip this over at a sharp enough angle like that, I can now take this top off and show you that there is the dirty, captivated, kept away, and that's lovely and clean in there. Yeah. Now I'll try and put that back in so the seal seals are not... <laughs> There you go, yeah, and it's sealed, and now it doesn't drip into Happy the... Days. So yeah, we're, we're not actually ever contaminating the pad. When you clean it, you're not ever cross-contamination. So it works, it does its job. It, it will work for foam. I said earlier about, you know, yep. foam's easy to clean, but it works for all types of pads, wall pad, microfiber, and foam pads. It's... So with the pads clean then, it's onto the gloss enhancement stage. Let's crack on with that then. Yep, let's go.
<laughs> okay then guys, so there we go. Then we've done all of the polishing work on here. We've done the correction and the refinement stage then. So thanks very much to Kelly, Ash and Jay for sorting that out for me. We've used a selection of machines as well. So these guys have been using the UDOS. I have used this a few months back. I'm sure you've seen that, but I'll put a link to that in the description below. It was on the Range Rover. Um, I've had a chance to play with a big foot and the cordless flex, really, really nice machines. And this mini one here, the PXC from flex, absolutely love that. So I've got a cheap Chinese knockoff and that definitely outperforms that. So yeah, it's very enjoyable using that. We're now just doing a final inspection and wipe down. So you can see Kelly doing behind me. We're going to be applying some coatings as well. So you'll see that in the next video. Again, thanks to these guys. Thanks to Lake Country for organizing this. If you've enjoyed this video, don't forget to smash that like button and subscribe if you've not already subscribed. And we'll see you next week. I still got audio. Winner. <laughs>